Jeez, this process of getting every single golden crowns with every character in the game, in every single micro games of this game of us 2, did took me about 10 hours to do this process. But exponentially, I think it's quite worth it at the end, because after doing so, we were able to get ourselves our next toy in our hands. So, which one will that be? As soon as I'm able to actually tap uh, Obilon right here, and that we get ourselves Whistle a Tune. Okay, sounds legitimate. So, I guess we should probably be able to show this off during that time, so... Hey, what's up everybody? It is I am the one and only, Tiana here once again, and I'm back for yet again for the likes of the Maxi Toys videos once again. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for some more of Let's Play of WarriorWare Touched for the Nintendo DS. So, last time we did show us the forms of some of those uh, remakes towers within Monster Mega Mix, alongside with the forms of Hardcore Mix, and finally, Nolly Mix. So as a result, we did those fine enough as it goes by, so either way though. So yeah, uh, today for this video, this will going to be the final video for the sake of WarriorWare Touched. And the reason being for this is because uh, the majority of the forms of the final conclusion of this Let's Play will be mainly focusing on the Toy Room selection. Now, before we get into that though, yeah, I have to arrange some of these uh, characters on screen just in case they don't wander it around just to make things a little bit more messy during the forms of the Games Room. So we figure I was able to show you guys that for the final time and will show us the forms of the Game Room or to be more specifically, the souvenirs kind of stuff, because much like the forms of WarriorWare Twisted, that uh, if you manage to be able to play through the game, basically though is the fact that you can able to interact with different souvenirs as much as you wanted to. Like, some of them are for distractions, and then some other ones though, ranging from the forms of some certain uh, challenges and stuff like that, which, uh... You know, exponentially speaking, it's just about the fact the matter is though, is the fact that, well... Obviously, you're gonna have to you you're gonna be using the touchscreen controls for the majority of the time with the majority of those souvenirs. Because obviously, in this first one I'm showing you right now is the fact that we got to create a s massive snowball, and on top of that, you can just essentially try to able to. Well, as soon as I able to actually get this thing working properly with all that rolling the snowball, and once you've done so, hey, look at that, a snowman. But if I dare touch it though. Oh no, there goes my snowman. So, that sort of stuff as far as this is concerned. Now, if you couldn't tell already, this is my uh, post-commentary on this segment, especially because, relatively speaking though, I was gonna able to try to mention more about the forms of the majority of those uh, souvenirs you can find throughout the whole game. But honestly guys, I think I should probably just go ahead and just cut straight to the point to able to talk about uh, the final set of news we'd like to discuss during the forms of this particular video. Well, first of all, about the fact the matter is though, is the fact that I apologize for that particular awkward uh, segment during my commentary, but that's only mainly because I got myself my croaky throat right now, but hopefully though I'll make myself better during the forms of the later days to come, so... Anyway, a few things I want to explain, and that is the fact that, well, today's day is, of course, the uh, the 21st of December today, in this case, in 2022 today, only four more days to go until Christmas Day is approaching, and because of this, though, very excited about that, as you probably already know, and exponentially, after we've done with not only... Uh, WarriorWare touched, but also Super Mario Bros. 3 as well, that we figure I'm also able to take a break on uploading schedules from now on until uh, the 25th of December, mainly because of most any other, like, uh, Christmas tradition that we always attempt to able to make one of those videos based on around Christmas time and stuff like that. So, either way, though, that might be saying something. But again, I'm probably not going to explain things too much on this at the moment, just because, well, just got to wait and find out, and during that some point until on this Sunday, so... Anyway, and, uh, let's get to the forms of another topic for this point today, and that is the fact that, well, recently, we got ourselves the forms of four more games being added for the sake of the forms of the Nintendo Switch online, 
uh, membership, specifically Nintendo Switch Online Expansion Pack, which is to be more specifically the um, Sega Mega Drive games they added in. To be more specifically, four of them, as I said before, and those are uh, Golden Axe 2, Alien Storm, uh, Columns, and finally Virtual Fighter 2. So in some cases though, that those games have already been came out on the NSO expansion pack already, ever since, since like, you know, last Thursday and stuff like that. So yeah, that's actually uh, interesting to say the least. And uh, the second thing I want to mention is the fact that recently Splatoon 3 is already getting itself the, uh, the next Splatfest coming up during at some point in January. And that's what appears to be inspired by different kind of food. Like, for instance, there's spicy, sweet, and sour. So, that'll be interesting though. And I think it's gonna start until uh, the 7th of January, and it ends off on the, uh, well, the 9th of January on Monday. So, yeah, get your hopes up for this point, especially because, well, you don't want to miss out on the forms of specific competitions during the course of in uh, the Splatfest on uh, Splatoon 3. So, anyway, so another thing I would like to mention while this is happening is the fact that, well, um, exponentially speaking, that uh, we actually got ourselves some brief new uh, clips during the course of in the Disney Plus in the future for the sake of the forms of 2023 lineup. Like, I know for a fact that, yeah, we are definitely going to be getting ourselves the forms of, uh, well, I do apologize for that particular ringtone for this point, guys, because, uh, obviously about the fact that I think I, uh, accidentally activate the timer on, so, anywho, so as far as, um, you know, anything else they did show us in terms of the new, uh, trailer for the sake of the forms of Disney+, Plus, that, uh, we're about to be getting ourselves the next season for the likes of Loki, and on top of that, uh, Black Panther, Wakaba, uh, Forever, I think that's what it's called anyway. Despite the fact that I still have not seen the film yet, but, um, I promise you guys, I will get around into it at some point. Once it's gonna be released and doing at some point in 2023 on Disney Plus specifically. But, either way, that's far as saying goes, that's about it. So yeah, speaking of the forms of something streamlined or something related to streaming services, that uh, basically, apparently, Sonic Prime is actually now on the number one list for the sake of the top 10 in kids in the US today. So relatively speaking, Sonic Prime is actually in the number one, and number two goes to another version of Pinocchio for some reason. And uh, that's about it basically as far as I can usually think about this for the sake of time. So yeah, that's that. And the next thing they did show us, or the next thing I want to mention, is that, well, exponentially, that Final Fantasy 1 all the way up to 6, uh, Pixel Remaster, um, I think that particular compilation is going to be launching for the Switch until next spring, until in 2023, and also they were able to actually also be released on the PlayStation 4 as well. And, uh, I think it's going to include the actual, uh, the collector's edition as far as I'm aware. Like, for instance, there is the, uh, uh, the game itself, obviously, and there's also the forms of, uh, uh, a two-disc picture, uh, vinyl record set, and there's also the forms of the anniversary box, and, uh, there's also, uh, pixel art book, and also there is the, uh, pixel figures, which is interesting, all things considered, so, yeah, that might be saying something for, uh, those of you other Final Fantasy fans will be very hyped about this, and, uh, yeah, everything else goes all fine and dandy and everything, so... Oh yeah, let's talk about the next thing I wanted to mention, and that is the fact that, well, uh, recently, The Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers, has officially become, well, two decades old now, ever since in 2002, especially considering how the fact that this is one of the longest films ever, especially considering I sort of remember watching, uh, uh, The Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers before, but I haven't watched it since, because obviously I just somehow got distracted by other things for this point, but, uh, uh, relatively speaking of, what I've heard is actually a really dang good film, at least from my, uh, perspective-wise. But, either way, though, that might be saying something, so... And the next thing I want to mention is the fact that, well, so far, in terms of the forms of gaming delays, during the forms of this entire year so far, 
that uh, we actually got uh, quite a number of those uh, gaming delays for the sake of the forms of the release dates and all that stuff, and uh, yeah, that's as far as saying goes. I think that's as far as I can just say about that particular segment. Although, those games are Stalker 2, um, Hearts of Channel Bolly, I think that's what it says anyway. Uh, the game was supposed to be released on uh, the 28th of April this year, or uh, December the 8th of this year, but now it's been delayed again, but this time it's going to be delayed until in the first half of 2023. So, yeah, that's saying something. And uh, also say it applies with uh, Dying Light 2 for the Nintendo Switch, which I think... Relatively speaking, that originally Dying Light 2 for the Nintendo Switch was supposed to be released uh, during the course of in February the 4th this year, but it will be uh, released at some point later on throughout this year in 2022, but we shall see what happens there. And I think the sequel is still hit uh, tw PlayStation 5 and uh, Xbox Series X slash S, and uh, PS4, and, well, I don't know why I usually say for this point right now, because, again, I do apologize for my commentary, because it's a little bit a tad awkward, because, and also, not to mention, though, in addition with my, uh, throat is actually getting a bit croaked up, but I'm also, um, having struggling breathing, which, as a result, though, this is maybe something to do with the fact that maybe I'm talking a lot, or perhaps even maybe it might be something else, and, okay, this is how you essentially escape from this. Uh, table tennis two-player thing right there. So I'm as well able to take it easy with this Especially after recording this while this is done and then hopefully though we will be back for more uh, Recording sessions and join at some point in uh, the next couple of days or so and maybe potentially We're about to get started for more commentary at some point and during the next year in 2023 So should be pretty exciting especially considering how the fact that well Relatively speaking, I'm just really looking forward to 2023, so... Anyway, uh, the next game Dave got delayed, and that's what appears to be Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. Uh, that game was supposed to be released on uh, this year, but now it's been pushed back until the 26th of May in 2023, so... That's all I can say about that particular uh, stuff like this. And the next game they did manage to get delayed off, and that's what appears to be The Settlers. Which, that game was supposed to be released in during the forms of March 17th of this year. But unfortunately though, uh, as far as I'm aware, much like the forms of uh, The Advance Wars uh, 1 Plus 2 Reboot Camp, that uh, basically though, it hasn't given the actual unannounced uh, later date yet. So because of this though, um, we'll start to wait and find out, and during that some point, uh, in the next couple of days or so, but that's as far as saying goes, I think that's as far as I can try to mention. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention about the forms of Exo Mecha, which I think that particular game has also been delayed as well. So, relatively speaking though, it was supposed to be able to get itself its release date, but, uh, um, we'll have to wait and find out and during the future days to come, mainly for 2023's case, but again, we shall probably see what happens there, so. And, uh, for the sake of the forms of Forspoken, uh, that game was supposed to be able to release and during the 25th of May, or, uh, the 11th of October this year, but now it's been pushed back until specifically in January in 2023, in the 24th to be more specifically, so, yeah, not much else to tell for that particular part. And the last game I want to mention is the forms of Odd Bowlers, which I believe that game has been delayed during the forms of, well, it was supposed to be released in during the forms of March 24th, but it's been pushed back in during the forms of early 2023 or something. Well, I have no idea how do I explain about this, because again, I apologize for my comment take is a little bit awkward at this point today, but hopefully, relatively speaking though, is the fact that both uh, Mighty and Ray uh, are both very, very close towards the end of uh, Super Mario Bros. 3. Like, after all, that ever since in yesterday, they both already did manage to win through uh, uh, World 7, but now they moved on to the final world in the game, which is of course, World 8. So, relatively speaking though, we're actually getting very, very 
very close towards the end of that particular playthrough of Super Mario Bros. 3 before we move on to... Um, now, for what I've heard about the fact the matter is, though, is the fact that there might be another leak going on at the moment, but I think, to be honest with you, I'm actually taking a break for looking up on, um, you know, leaks and rumors at this point, because, let me tell you, I think rumors and leaks are getting very old very fast, especially considering how the fact that, well... You know what I mean, they always try to troll us, that's to be expected at that point, and it's just about the fact that I'm just getting sick of, like, hearing all these, uh, leaks and rumors and stuff like that, which, I know it's fun for a laugh, but it's just about the fact that it might actually just to break my, uh, uh, patience when it comes to likely knowing of what specific announcements they brings us into. So, either way, though, that might be saying something where it comes to, like, no longer trusting, uh, rumors and leaks, and you probably named the rest, so... But that's just what I find anyway, so, uh, anywho. Also, kind of thing about it, though, is the fact that I just really love, uh, the actual distractions about the fact that with all these different kinds of souvenirs you can play around with, especially considering how the fact that, well... Yeah, it does remind me of something related to not only uh, WarriorWare Twisted, except the fact that, well, everything else in this game is now being controlled by not only um, occasional touchscreens, but also occasional moments by utilizing the microphone for your uh, blowing to your mic for certain stimulations. Like, for example, this particular souvenir right there. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, how are you able to actually interact with this particular souvenir? Well, basically, it turns out that you have to use your microphone in order to able to blow it, and basically, that's essentially how you can do for, uh, trying to get this thing worked. So, yeah, that's about it, basically. And, um, also, about the fact the matter is, though, is that unlike in WarriorWare Twisted, that basically you have to use the actual, like, uh, the gyro sensing controls in order to able to take control of, like, certain amount of stuff. So, either way. Speaking of WarriorWare Twisted, actually, I was originally trying to able to show you guys the one last thing, uh, f before we able to actually end off this particular Let's Play of WarriorWare Touched. And that's what it appears to be about the fact that there was actually a secret to this, by able to actually access to the save data with WarriorWare Twisted, alongside with WarriorWare Touched. But I'll explain more details on that in a moment, because either way, though, let's just go ahead and, uh, show off this pet parrot right here, that you can able to speak into your microphone, and I think you might actually just say something, uh, responds or something like this, but, yeah, I think they did try to say something like, well, I guess that's not much else to say. <laughs> but, uh, again, I will have to admit, though, right away, it's just about the fact that, well, I think that's as far as I can try to discuss upon, in terms of Warrior where it touched itself, but either way, I'll promise you guys I will get into my final thoughts of this entire game once we show off the final souvenir in this whole game by showing you guys uh, the staff credit sequence. So, that might be saying something. So, and on top of all that stuff though, it's just about the fact the matter is though, is the fact that I, I think, relatively speaking though, that's, uh, oh, and another thing too. That, uh, for those of you other Pokemon fans out there, especially Noseable, if you know the actual Pokemon anime for a very long time, you do realize about the fact that there might be some sad news is about to happen, and during at some point in the beginning of 2023, to be more specifically in Japan, uh, version first, whilst in the international version, in the English version, might come up until later. That's, ladies and gentlemen, yes, unfortunately though, Ash Ketchum, alongside with Pikachu, is about to be no longer in continuing for the animate stuff. Well, relatively speaking, until, uh, Generation 9 animate exists. So, and because of this, though, yeah, it looks like about the fact that, well, the, uh, the last few segments of not only Ash Ketchum, but also Pikachu's story as well, and because of this, though, the last, uh, few story segments, or should I say, the final chapter in, uh, Ash and Pikachu's, uh, story, uh, is about to be able to have 11 episodes to air starting on the 13th of January in 2023 in Japan. So, because of this, though, after those particular episodes have been up, well, I'm afraid to tell you, 
uh, we have to move on to the new era when it comes to uh, Pokemon anime by able to actually not only experience the new region, but also the characters will be replaced. So because of this though, I'm actually feeling incredibly uh, happy, but also very sad as well, because much like, uh, let's just say, My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, that basically though, that as soon as when the, uh, the next chapter awaits us, this means about the fact that we must able to move on. And because of this, though, yeah, well, truth be told, though, is the fact that, thankfully, though, Ash Ketchum and alongside with Pikachu in the anime have been around for about 25 years now. I mean, jeez, 25 years ago, since when it first came out in Japan in 1997. Like, as a result, I think it's actually very incredible, in my opinion. Although, he did manage to able to pop over into the forms of certain movies, though, too. So, as a result, I can't really tell what's going to be up next for the uh, couple of Pokemon movies these days now. Although, for what I've noticed about the fact that the Secrets of the Jungle might be considered this to be the last uh, Ash Ketchum and Pikachu's uh, film as far as I'm aware. Although I may be wrong because I haven't exactly watched um, that much Pokemon anime um, during the course of in the past few days. No, I apologize for that particular belch earlier, just because, well, I've just been drinking a lot, so because of this, though, I do apologize for that. So anyways, let's look at this glorious custard, which I almost first thought I was trying to eat it, but apparently, though, if you try to able to, like, not only just tap it, but also if you try to stretch it all over the place with this particular custard pudding, then obviously it'll make some strange sound effects, like, uh, the doing and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, in fact, let me know in the comments down below for the question of the day. Uh, are you guys are uh, very incredibly sad to able to see Ash Ketchum and Pikachu go and, uh, move on? Because, as far as I'm aware, that, uh, I really do miss those amazing duo for the Pokemon anime, which I'm sure enough, though, that it might actually upset a lot of people, too. I mean, let's face it, though, it's just about the fact the matter is, though, as I said, it's been about 25 years ago since when, uh, you know, Ash Ketchum and Pikachu just start the adventure together, and because of that though, since I choose you episode, so because of this though, not the, uh, oh, you know what I mean, not the actual movie from the likes of I choose you movie, but I'm more referring to as the TV series of that, so. But, uh, yeah, seems all pretty, uh, something, I suppose, and, uh, yeah, I guess that's about it, basically, so, uh, I should probably also mention about this as well, is the fact that uh, when it comes to like, uh, souvenir challenges, as far as you can able to actually interact with, that basically does the fact that once you complete, um, certain high scores, like, I think there was actually a grand total of like, um, six of them, but either way, though, we'll show this off in a second, because either way, let's just go ahead and show off the chameleon right there. What's even crazy about the chameleon one, it's the fact that not only you can able to actually just to tap the actual uh, the touch screen, so you can able to let the chameleon uh, decide to able to spring out the actual tongue out, but also as you can tell from that particular, I would say wallpaper. Well, mind you, he did start off as in green color, but if you try to able to like, um, how do you do this? Ah, um, oh, there we go. That if you try to drag in the another wallpaper, then basically he'll change different colors, so he can able to, you know, uh, camouflage for the certain wallpapers. So, pretty cool and fascinating at the same time, which I've definitely heard about chameleons before, but uh, relatively speaking, though, it's just for uh, distractions, I guess. Oh, and also those souvenirs does remind me of also from the likes of the forms of Mario Party events as well. Despite the fact that Mario Party Advance does have some very weird and questionable um, gadgets they're able to bring us into and able to actually interact with as well. So, relatively speaking though, I've got no words to say in terms of Mario Party Advance gadgets wise. So, anyway, so now we're done with the forms of several of uh, souvenirs we can possibly show off, but now we'll show off the forms of some challenge based ones. So, you probably noticed about the fact that there is actually like, uh, five shown up right here. But there's also another one, if you do manage to able to get certain high scores, 
for uh, certain game challenges. Like, for example, we're going to be hitting into Orbit Ball. That basically, we need to reach a certain amount of uh, uh, miles. And then basically, if you manage to able to reach for about over 1,000 miles, then basically, you would be able to actually unlock something if you do manage to beat the high score. So... And obviously, this is based off of one of those boss micro-games in Katanano stage. Although, the noticeable difference is this time, it's now more endless. So because of this time, yeah, you got to avoid a lot of stuff in this mini-game, or this little souvenir challenge, by uh, not only avoid certain stars, but also certain uh, objects as well, including the returning clouds. From the likes of in level 2 and level 3 variants of... Uh, uh, you know what I mean with the boss micro gaming cat and nano stage. So either way though, that might be saying something. So of course you can able to still uh, draw certain lines and ah, uh, drat, that was actually pretty miserable. But hopefully I'll try to able to do this uh, accomplishment for the third times the charm, I suppose. But either way, we shall see. So in some cases though, yeah, I just need to focus right here. Oh, by the way, if you accidentally hit something right there, then basically it just stuns you, and then you just simply just fell down like anything else. And we've beaten a high score, so that means I'll be able to get something rewarding if I do somehow manage to able to give up on this particular mini challenge. So, such as like that. So now we've actually done with that, and once you get back into the forms of in, uh, uh, the games room, then basically something will happen, but, uh, first of all, uh, yeah, let me just go ahead and show off, uh, some others first. Like, for instance, we're gonna be hit on to, um, Air Ride, or Air Dude, as far as the actual, uh, the souvenir, uh, thing itself is called anyway. That basically, though, you have to use the microphone on this particular, uh, challenge, and basically we need to reach for about, uh, 50 yards, so that's the whole entire purpose of the forms of how this particular challenge as far as I'm concerned. But, uh, mind you, it can be very tricky at times, but at least I found, uh, Orbit Ball to be a lot easier to manage. Just because that was actually, a, uh, the actual challenge that's actually based off from the boss micro game from Katanano stage, like I said before. But as far as the rest of it goes, well, it might be a little bit tricky, especially noticeable you have to work with the forms of a lot of timing requirements for, uh, certain challenges. Like, for instance, on Air Dude, that basically you have to blow onto the mic or shout at the mic at that specific time. And also on top of that is the fact that you really don't want to able to, you know, blow it too hard. Because otherwise, though, you might able to actually just do not make it to, like, um, over 100 yards. So, yeah, that might be a little bit more situational more than anything. So, yeah, that's as far as saying goes. And also, we stumbled across the Red Bird Fella. Ever since any forms of it, not only in WarriorWare Inc. Mini Game Mania, but it's also that any forms of it WarriorWare Twisted as well. But uh, then again, we'll show off uh, that little uh, red fella and during after we go through this entire uh, list of challenges as far as every single like souvenirs as far as they do somehow manage to contains itself. So. But as I said, there are about six of those uh, different uh, souvenir challenges you can participate in for. So in some cases, though, if you beat the high score, then you get a specific nice reward after doing so. And uh, it might take a bit some time to get a lot of practice on these uh, souvenir challenges, as far as I'm aware. Especially consists about the fact that you get out to be able to get a lot of uh, not only practicing, but it's also about the fact that if you dare mess up once, then you have to start all over again for this entire process, but, uh... Yeah, that's as far as I can usually try to think about it. And of course, that we get into the forms of, um, you know, Big Well, which is obviously based off of one of those... Um, I would say it's actually based off of one of those, uh, micro-games for, uh, Dr. Crygore, if I might be mistaken. But, either way though, because it has been a very long while since I actually come back into this game, as I said before, especially consists about the fact that this entire process of uploading schedules on this game can take a bit while, so... 
But anyways, let's just go and uh, do this for the last time, and hopefully with a much more successful attempt, because in order able to get something rewarding, is the fact that we need to reach for about over um, 80 meters at piece, so... And speaking of which, I accomplished that. Because as far as I'm aware, if the actual uh, hammer throw itself does almost go close to the forms of the left screen or the right screen, then basically though, it's the fact that you might able to actually realize that uh, it doesn't go any further ahead when it gets close to the uh, not only the left uh, black bar, but also the right uh, black bar as well. So. Yeah, just something to keep in mind. So, anyway, so here we have ourselves. This by far is, in my opinion, is one of the hardest uh, souvenir challenges in the whole game, which appears to be buddy forms of Juggle Boy. And the reason why I found this one to be a lot harder compared to the forms of most of any other souvenir challenges is that I think, to me, the timing aspect on this souvenir uh, game feels a bit fickle, in my opinion. Especially consists about the fact that you have to rely on the forms of that particular. Uh, the sprite animation, but as a result, if you're mostly able to get the hang of it though, it shouldn't be too bad. And in fact, that uh, reaching 40 points wasn't so much of an issue, but uh, it gets a bit ridiculous though, and during at some point, whenever we get to like juggle 10, that basically though is the fact that we need to juggle for almost every single object within like you know, certain uh, clubs, or uh, occasional barrels, or something like that too. So, either way though. Oh, and also another thing too, is the fact that congrats to uh, Kepking74 by the way, because of not only that he decided able to come back into the story, for the likes of Sonic 06, because after all, that he somehow finished up the silver story uh, at first, which is pretty... Uh, Something, I suppose, especially considering how the fact that, well, it was originally going to be expected able to start with Sonic Story, but either way, he somehow immediately switched over to uh, Silver Story just to get that out of the way. And on top of that, he now actually receives about 77 subscribers, which by this time he's almost gone up to 100. So I have no idea when he's going to get to 100 subscribers. I have no idea. Well, mind you about the fact that for our uh, subscriber count, that we actually gone so far into almost to a point that we've almost had 650, but right now we're on 636 right now, because for the love of God, I keep on getting screwed over by the forms that uh, the random luck based uh, subscriber count so far, which I honestly have no idea why I say things like that. Oh, there's that random UFO, by the way, so I have no idea why that's there, but. Uh, Anyway, so now we've actually done with that, and after all, we've reached uh, 40 or more points. So now let's go ahead and uh, go into the games room right here, and able to bring us to ourselves not one, not two, not three, but I think there was actually four more souvenirs that we can able to bring out. Like, for instance, we actually got ourselves about, I would say we able to actually stumble across into ourselves the bubble kind of uh, um, souvenir. And also there's the actual, uh, I don't know what you call this thing. And, uh, also there's the forms of, uh, well this, this does remind me of something related to that. One of those mini games from the likes of in Mario Party Island Tour. But then again, I will, uh, talk more about it until then. So anyway, so now we're done with, uh, those. And now let's go ahead and show off the forms of the next, uh, souvenir challenge. And that's what appears to be, we've met again with, uh, Poro. So in this time around though, is the fact that I'm pretty sure that we actually stumbled across into ourselves Poro T, which stands for Touched. So as a result though, I think this might be something about the fact that, well... I know for a fact that on uh, the original WarriorWare, in this case WarriorWare Inc. Minigame Mania, that it just simply calls it Poro, or uh, Birds and Beans. And on top of that, if you ever play WarriorWare Twisted, that obviously the title you do get is uh, Poro R, which stands for like rotation and stuff. Whilst in here though, all you have to really do is just use the stylus and that's pretty much about it. So, and the entire objective is pretty simple on this uh, Poro T, and that is the fact that we can just simply able to actually just, well, uh, drag the, uh, Poro with the stylus, and then you can just simply just, well, let it go when it's released, so that you can able to actually extend, um, his tongue, so that way he can able to eat all kinds of flies around here, 
The only noticeable differences, as far as I realized this time, is the fact that, well, in order to get a game over on this particular um, Super Nemo, as you can say, that as you can tell, we actually got surrounded by not only one, but four flowers, potentially. So, if you did manage to able to let one of those, uh, or actually get a thing about it, if you let all of your flowers to become dead, thanks to forms of certain flies, or anything else like this, basically the game is over. So because of this though, yeah, it's gonna have to eat so many of those um, flies as much as possible. And I think the high score targets you got to reach out for in order to able to get the next souvenir, that's what appears to be about 3,000 points, so... Not much else to say about this, basically. In fact, you can actually be able to actually pull off certain uh, uh, combos if you want, especially considering how the fact that you can able to actually eat so many of those flies and all that stuff at once. So, especially in this uh, whole batch of flies coming from uh, the distance. So, either way, though, you can able to actually get some ridiculous amount of points if you manage to able to pull off something like this. So. Pretty swell, I'm telling you. Pretty swell. Especially that, uh, well, as long as you're able to have some fun with this, though. And in fact, I'm actually, uh, oh, by the way, to get, oh, god. Oh, okay. So apparently that those, uh, crowds of flies doesn't seem to hurt me this time. So I'm guessing it's a little bit more different for that respect. But, uh, that might be saying something. And also, if you decided able to eat those, uh, Bigger variations of certain flies basically you have to do a bit of a twirl um, style of this thing because otherwise you're soon enough able to actually pull this off. So, but anyway, now we've actually done with uh, Poro T, and from here we're able to get ourselves another souvenir. And this time, what appears to be Buddy Forms, I, I would classify for saying, uh, the last uh, souvenir challenge, and that's what appears to be that familiar. Um, game that's almost inspired by one of those micro games that you find from the likes of mic mini games so and in this one we have to utilize the microphone in order to, able to uh play with it and especially that in order to able to get the high score that you need to go for about 15 jump ropes so that's as far as i can usually try to say about this for the most part so anyway so, yeah, not much else to talk about at this point, guys, because I know for the fact that, well, we, you know, we've almost done with this game. I know I've said this quite a lot, but ultimately speaking, though, I think we should probably just go ahead and say this right now, that uh, we were just really looking forward to able to move on to the next game after uh, we finish up with this game. Oh, and another thing I want to mention is the fact that you guys even heard about the forms of the film called uh, Mouse Hunt? that has been made by the likes of uh, DreamWorks and stuff. Yeah, before uh, Small Soldiers and before Ants and uh, before The Prince of Egypt. Well, apparently uh, Mouse Hunt is actually now becoming 25 years old just recently. So yeah, time flies, doesn't it? Especially considering how the fact that we're well to be speaking now, despite having seen the film um, by myself, because, mind you, I'm sort of used to with, like, DreamWorks animation films a lot. So, either way, though, that might be saying something, so... Anyways, folks, so now we've actually completed the forms of every single minigame or souvenir challenges. And, uh, as you can tell, we actually got some flowers, uh, surrounded with the forms of not only Toy Room 1, but also Toy Room 2. And that's only mainly because we actually got every single, every single souvenirs throughout the majority of what we were touched. So because of this though, and what's the reward if you do somehow manage to get um, every single souvenirs in the game? Basically, we got ourselves a bit of a, um, the familiar, um, toy that we can able to interact with since Warrior we were twisted. That's what appears to be this little, uh, radio box, which basically it allows you to able to actually play around with the music and stuff. But there's technically not the last one out of the bunch, though, because there's actually technically another one you can get by able to actually not only, uh, access to Warrior we were twisted, but also this game as well. But... Relatively speaking, since this is recorded, since this uh, footage usually records from the likes of in the Wii U uh, downloadable version of the game, 
And it also applies to the 3DS downloadable version as well, if you do manage to able to get the game thanks to the Platinum points uh, back in 2016 either way. That basically though is the fact that you won't be able to actually access the final item you can get. But I'll get to more now in a second, because this particular souvenir does kind of feel a bit familiar to me, because it does remind me of one of those uh, mini games you can play in a uh, Mario Party Island Tour, where basically we have to able to actually just to pause on that specific uh, scene from like film reel to reel. So yeah, it does remind me of that honestly. Except the fact that in Island Tour you have to use the circle pad and press the A button to stop the actual scene. Whilst any forms of in here though, then you just simply use the touch screen and that's pretty much about it. So. So as I was saying, that's uh, the last thing you, the last thing you do get if you manage to able to actually not only access to WarriorWare Twisted, but also WarriorWare Touched as well. And that's what appears to be the special uh, uh, promotional video uh, for the likes of Mona Pizza, which it all able to actually access to that particular final thing you can get. That you know you have to access to two of those games, and not only. He can able to do that technique within the forms of the original DS models, but it's also on the DS Lite as well. So it will not work on DSi or DSi XL, but relatively speaking, though, it's just the fact the fact that I think that's as far as I can uh, try to mention. But uh, what it gets in there, though, is just basically it shows us the forms of not only a montage of uh, Mona herself, but also we get able to actually listen to that. You know, the iconic uh, theme song for the sake of Mona's pizza song from the likes of WarriorWare Twisted, except the fact that it's now on the DS, so... Yeah, it seems like a nice little callback from the likes of the forms of the past WarriorWare game, which is of course WarriorWare Twisted, so... Yeah, that's saying something. Oh, and another thing I would like to mention about this as well, that uh, recently, not only do we get ourselves the forms of uh, Rusty Rose, thanks to the forms of that particular Sonic Prime event, for the likes of the forms of Sonic Dash, but also about the fact that I recently managed to able to did this on my own time for a bit in the past few days ago, that I've managed to able to actually access to, um, let's just say, two characters with their cosmetic uh, costumes, based off from Christmas holiday costumes, for both Amy and Silver the Hedgehog, so yeah, something I would like to mention about, but of course that is a bit better late than ever to able to mention something like that now, but uh, regardless of such though, I did somehow manage to able to call up. And yeah, I was also very surprised to see uh, Sonic Prime characters make their playable debut, for not only from the likes of uh, Sonic Dash, but also uh, Sonic Forces Speed Battle, which I think I've already mentioned about that, in the last video anyway, or something like this happens will do. But uh, either way though, I'm just very glad that I'm not going to be missing out on much, especially considering how the fact that despite I now give up on, uh, you know what I mean with all that, you know, Sonic Forces Speed Battle, because I just keep on getting owned by not only several players online, but it's also about the fact that I have no idea when does the service will shut down or something, but... That's far as saying goes, that's as far as I can think about it. And also we got ourselves this little Ashley's theme right here, which I think technically we've already briefly hear about it, ever since in her stage anyway, but now we can able to actually hear her actual theme in this particular souvenir right there. So yeah, in this little uh, sound box, as you can tell, you can actually select up to three different music based off of not only Mario Paint, but also Ashley's theme song, and of course, uh, Hargling's Alley, Alley from the likes of, uh, I don't know which specific game is actually called, they have to be able to deal with the forms of point and gun. Uh, shooting NES game, but let me know in the comments down below. So anyway, so now we've actually shown off the rest of it anyway, but there's also some other couple of things I want to show off before we hit on to the last thing, which is of course, uh, the game credits and stuff like that, is that once you get into the options menu, that as you can see, not only do you able to actually access to the challenge, uh, no, the, uh, uh, change hands, but it's also about the fact that you can either erase your data or go back to the title screen if you wanted to. But it's also view Apple Logs, which, much like the forms of in uh, both WarriorWare Inc. Mini Game Mania 
and Warrior were twisted, you can just simply just re-watch the previous uh, outblogs depending on the forms of your different tastes or specifically just look back on the forms of the other outblogs for certain characters which is always appreciation about this and uh, yeah, that's all I can really say about this. So now let's go ahead and show off the final thing before we're done with this let's play and that is the credit scene. So. And there you go folks, that pretty much concludes our Let's Play of WarriorWare Touched for the Nintendo DS. So let's give my final thoughts of uh, uh, WarriorWare Touched. In fact, this particular credit sequence does remind me of something like a similar kind of visual style for not only WarriorWare Inc. Minigame Mania, but also say applies with the forms of WarriorWare Twisted as well. But on the other hand, whenever we get to WarriorWare Smooth Moves though, that the credits uh, visual style will be a lot different. But that again, we'll save that and turn it at some point next year, roughly speaking. So anyways, let's give my final thoughts of, um, well, WarriorWare Touched. So I really enjoyed this title, especially considering how the fact that I will say this right now, Despite how Sonic and Mighty have both suffered by the forms of that pretty bad uh, Warrior DS game, which appears to be Warrior Master of Disguise, I will admit though right away, I actually really enjoy WarriorWare Touched a lot more than the forms of how it does it on WarriorWare or Warrior Master of Disguise. Or well, heck, even especially noticeable, there's technically another uh, set of DS games uh, did somehow release for WarriorWare. And that's what appears to be both WarriorWare Snaps and WarriorWare DIY, or in some cases do it yourself for the DS version, which I will definitely cover uh, do it yourself within uh, both versions of the game, either on the uh, the DS version and the WiiWare version, which unfortunately for the WiiWare owners, that you can no longer get the game anymore. But Either way though, luckily I still managed able to guard the game with me on my separate white Wii just to show you guys off and join at some point in the future. So anyways, let's talk about the forms of WarriorWare Touch basically. I still really enjoyed the uh, the gameplay as we expected, especially considering how the fact that the main selling point of this game is of course utilizing the actual touchscreen controls and that's pretty much about it. And um, the graphics do look very, very good, even especially noticeable this is on the Nintendo DS after all. And also I really enjoy the soundtrack as well. And uh, the controls wise, it's pretty much perfection in almost every way. I mean, the game does have lesser amounts of micro games compared to the forms of how it does it on the past two games. But honestly, the amount of, uh, uh, the number of uh, micro games doesn't really matter though, because they are generally very, very good. Well, the only couple of exceptions though, I must be honest here, and that's what appears to be. I'm not a big fan of uh, uh, Global Warning, but that's only mainly because I'm not very great when it comes to like, not only Igaruka, but it's also Galaga as well, type of like, uh, micro game or something like that. But, either way though, that's as far as saying goes, I think that's as far as I can say in terms of the forms of WarriorWare Touch basically, so I do manage to be able to enjoy it. Although, you can able to actually just do, I really able to recommend this game for you guys, especially if you either own uh, the DS, or DS Lite, or DSi, or DSi XL, you can just simply get the physical copy. And so it applies if you ever got the any other models for the 3DS, because obviously the 3DS does have DS games backwards compatibility as well. So, yeah, you can be able to actually still get the chance that you can be able to actually get this game as in physical form. However, on the Wii U owners though, you must be hurry up because obviously that in, you know, uh, until in 2023 that both the Wii U and 3DS eShops will be closed down forever until 2023 roll around and, uh, you might need to be hurry up until before you're able to actually get this game for quite cheap. Especially considering how the fact that you really don't want able to come across into fake uh, copies of the games. Like I've somehow managed to able to come across into quite a lot of those fake copies a lot in the past. But either way, that's far as saying goes. Yeah, she definitely recommend to get this game. Although, I recommend you do not play the game on emulator by the way. Because most of those micro games will not work for... Uh, Ah, uh, you know what I mean, with all that emulation controls. So yeah, that was it basically, ladies and gentlemen. And this is me, Tiana, here, from the likes of the Maxi Toys. And next up, in terms of the forms of the WarriorWare series of Let's Plays, that's what appears to be the moment we've all been waiting for. 
that is the forms of Warrior Wear Smooth Moves for the Nintendo Wii. So I'm very looking forward to that title, not only because of my nostalgia, but also we are very appreciated about the fact that, well, um, a lot of people seem to able to talk about Smooth Moves a lot more than the other games, which I'm sure enough though maybe it's probably because of the forms of nostalgia memory or something, or perhaps even maybe because the Michael game selections are really dang good, at least as far as I can usually tell for that point, so, but still that has to be wait for the time being, so anyway, so, yeah, we'll just let the credits roll as soon as I'm able to actually just take a rest or take a break for a bit, so I'll see you guys in Drain at some point in the next couple of days, so I'll see you guys then, bye.